So to everybody, no, good morning. And uh, as I've said, uh, this will be a different uh, topic. No? So usually in our physics one, we have quantities. No? So when we talk about quantities, we always think of length. Uh, we have uh, to think about mass. We have to think about time. No? And they have their separate units attached to these quantities. No? Now we call length mass and time as fundamental or very basic quantities no? there's nothing more lower than those no so they are the building blocks of our derived quantities no now however what we will have in physics 2 no so this is the first topic on physics 2 there's a there's a topic there no that will not be able to that we cannot describe no? using length mass or time no so we will introduce another quantity here, which we will call as electric charge. No? So, uh, okay, so um, that, this is the next quantity no, that we will uh, add no, to the length, to the mass and time, no? uh, the, the unit or the quantity called electric charge. And probably no, the, the things that are involved with electric charges, which may probably not mention about electric fields no? so uh, so we have no uh, these lines here no? so we will probably not say that these lines no, uh, speaks a lot. No? So you are familiar with this view. No? And uh, what do you think goes to your mind when you see this one? So what goes to your mind when you see that one? So electricity, no? we think of uh, wirings and in the Philippines, we, we don't only see those power lines no? or uh, those towers, no? but even underneath that, may mga balay -balay, no? there are houses below these structures. No? And uh, that's not kind of surprising no? if it's in the setting in the Philippines. No? Okay. Okay. Uh, just a moment. No? I have a technical uh, problem. Uh, a picture of some power lines. No? And these power lines, uh, of course, no, what will probably enter our mind is that there are charges that goes into these lines. No? Now, there are individuals, guys, who kind of climb this tower. No? And when they climb the tower, all of a sudden, you know, they were shocked you know, the, when they hold a portion of the tower. There's a sudden electric shock that they got you know, and they fell. You know? So uh, sometimes we ask the question, did, did these wirings you know, uh, electrocute those persons? Uh, when, when, when you notice that they are still, they are still alive you know, when they fall, you'll, you'll wonder that how could they survive you know, this, uh, this uh, high voltage uh, lines? You know? This, this, uh, these power lines, guys, no, have thousands of voltage. No? So if this one will be the one who will, uh, uh, if the person no, really holds this line no, uh, that carries thousands of volts, you cannot survive it. No? But question, why did that person who receives an electric shock climbing this uh, tower no, uh, also falls down? No? Again, no, because of an electric charge, but it is not. No? The electric charge that are coming from these wirings. No? So eventually, no, as you have these towers no, uh, exist and with these lines there, no, somehow now they get they receive no an additional electric charge, but not enough no, to kill a person. So if you climb this tower, you can absorb that electric shock, no, but not really no on a sometimes no, on a detrimental or deadly fatal way. No? But somehow now we think of electric charges when we see these long lines of wire. No? 
lightning no a flash of light no in the sky caused by motions of electric charge no so electric charges in the first picture also no are believed to be in motion no they we call that eventually as electricity or current no when charges are flowing or moving in a in a wire no but what we will start today no uh, is are charges that do not move no we call them literally as electro statics no so let me type the word no so you will not miss out the word no so what we will have today no we will make mention of the word electro statics no and electrostatics from the meaning of the word these are basically no so electro for charges and statics for the word not in motion or at rest so how different are electrostatics from a current? Of course, they are they are very different. No? One is in motion, and then the other one that we will start today no, are those that do not move yet. No? So um, we use no, a moving charge in so many ways. No? In our homes, no, we use our TV. We cook our food no, in a stove, electric stove. No? We cool ourselves with air cons, electric fans. No? And probably now, if there's no electricity, we could not really, no, we, we will think that we could not survive. No? So uh, a few minutes of brownout, no? ah, grabe na itong reklamo sina. No? We complain no, already if the, there's a, a brownout for several, for an hour. No? So how much so if we will do away with electricity no? all the rest of our lives, I think no, we, it will be a new, very new thing for us. No? So electricity is very important no, to each and every one of us. No? Now, uh, the, the first person, no, so let's have some uh, individuals here. No? So Michael Faraday no, showed that electric current no, is induced by magnetic fields. No? So how does an electric current no, is produced? Uh, Michael Faraday no, uh, thought about... No, a magnetic field. So somehow there's a relationship with magnets and with electric current no? or electricity. No? Uh, there's even a word that they call as electromagnet, no? electromagnetism. No? So this word electromagnetism allows us to think no, that Electricity and magnetism are somehow related to each other. And the very first person who showed that that electricity can be created, the word for induced is created, is through the presence of magnetic fields. No? Now, some history no, and concepts of electromag uh, electricity or electrostatics. No? So the Greeks are the very, very no, uh, curious individuals. No? In the ancient days, no ancient time, so the Greeks no play a lot of role no in all this no, and to make mention, it was Thales of Miletus no, who probably no do some uh, experimentation no. So he's a very curious individual. He discovered these electric charges no. Now uh, I think one of the things that uh, Thales of Miletus no, did was he has this thing uh, called an amber. No? Uh, the way I understand an amber, no, aside from described as being a fossilized material, no, sometimes when you dry up no, a certain sap, no, a certain portion of uh, a sap, ang inang tagok sang kahoy, no? I think when you dry that up, no, you will also get a uh, a material that is very similar to plastic. No? Try to try to cut no, uh, a portion of the trunk of a mango tree. You'll notice that magwa ng yung atagok na no, ang sap. No? And when you, when it dries up, no, you'll see that it it's it looks like something like brown in color. No? And it appears no shiny and something like that. No? And uh, one one way they describe a number is also like that. No? Uh, a dried sap. But uh, also, no, others would describe it as a fossilized material already. No? 
So over a very very long period of time no, nga nag uh, dry up na siya no? Now what did uh Thales of Miletus do with this fossilized amber no? that uh, that resembles our present day plastic no? He rubbed this with some no uh with some cloth no and by rubbing it in a piece of cloth and place it on small bits of materials no like very tiny particles no like in our case if we cut some pieces of paper no and put it on the on the table and put this fossilized and rub amber we will see that this paper will now begin to be attracted to the amber no so again no? an amber in the greek no they call it as electron no? so amanang ilang word sang amber in the this is a Greek word, no? Greek word for amber, no? And uh, so that's the observation of Thales. No? So that's way back 600 BC. No? So just imagine a time like that, no? Very ancient time, but there are individuals that are really, no? Uh, into the uh, discovery and research, no? Now another individual, no, William Gilbert, no, and I think the word Gilbert, no, is also used as a unit, no, either in magnetism or or related to electricity, no. So he's uh, a 15th century English scientist, no. He studied the properties of lodestone, no. So lodestone guys, no, are uh, natural or stone versions of magnets, no. Lodestone, no? it's a uh, it's a naturally occurring magnet, maybe in a form of uh, a rock, no, or a stone. No? Now he studied systematically static electricity as well. No? He reported his findings in his uh, one thousand six hundred, no, uh, in sixteen hundred, no, in his book *De Magneto*. No? So most uh, of his discussion probably is on. Uh, Magnetism no? introduced the word no electric to designate the materials behaving like amber no a material called electron in the Greeks but in some texts no this spelling of this word electron in the Greeks is spelled letter K no instead of C no so this is where we also get our word electron no? which is of course no a negative so it is a it is a charge no so today an electron is a charge no? but th that's where we get also the the present word electron no? from the greek word electron which is the fossilized no? material called amber no? now uh charles coulomb also formulated his coulomb's law no so we will go into what Principle is this Coulomb's law. No? Alessandro Volta, no, he discovered or invented the battery, and probably the word Volta there no? is related to the word volts. No? So Alessandro Volta. Orsted Ampere, no? the Orsted discovered current, no? which deflects magnetic compass. And Ampere, on the other hand, no, discovered that current causes magnetic fields. No? So from what I've been talking about, no, the word electromagnetism no, is a word that relates electricity with magnetism. No? And the works of Orsted and Ampere no, showed how interrelated are the two concepts. No? We thought for a while that when you have a magnet, it's a separate thing from electricity. No? But actually, no, there's a topic in physics that is called electromag or electromagnetism no? to show the relationship of the two. No? Now the word Ohm or George Simon Ohm, no, for that case, he thought of no or discovered electrical conduction. Henry, no, uh, also no, uh, discovered about motor effect no of electric current. So when there's an electric current, somehow there's a force that is created, and eventually this force can create a spinning motion or a rotating motion, no. So if you put a, a shaft or a, a device that is acted on by a force, then you'll notice that there will be a spinning motion. And eventually, no, 
the they came about the with the idea of creating electric motors no faraday discovered current no and uh, we already mentioned this no so michael faraday no current induced by magnetic fields no now other individuals that have uh, very famous uh, applications also which will come out no in our later topic pa no so maybe towards the end no? i think chapter 8 no 7 chapter 8 we will we will be having no this electromagnetic waves no which we will mention again no uh, james maxwell no so maxwell is a very very important guy he may not be famous like einstein but he is very very intelligent no so maxwell's equation eventually came about no as a creation of electromagnetism so hertz on the other hand no also studied em waves no? so electromagnetic waves are sometimes or famously called as em waves no? so em waves no uh, is also no very familiar probably to some of you no? So Thomson is the one who discovered the electron no, that is present in our atoms. No? So, but again, no, maybe he uses the word already electron, uh, which you know, came about also no, from the earlier discoveries of the Greeks. No? So what is an electric charge? No? So when objects are rubbed together, they exert frictional forces on one another. No? So you could have a, a, no, no, maybe a, a, pen, a ball pen. No? So a ball pen usually is made of a plastic material. No? This plastic material resembles something like a, uh, no, it's, it resembles something like a, an amber. And if you rub it in your hair or maybe in the cloth, no? a kind of cloth like wool, silk, no? if you rub it and then, no? You tear down some bits of paper. You'll notice that when when it is placed now side by side with some bits of paper, what do you observe? No? So you can you can do that now uh, at home and make an observation no? if you cut some bits of paper. No? Now, uh, according to this definition, no, there, there there would be some kind of a frictional force that will be developing. No? So they acquire electric charge no so the rub objects no like the ball pen they get electric charges no and and somehow now they will now behave like the amber no that Thales of Miletus was first no able to observe no? now they tend to exert attractive forces on each other no and on other materials no? so if this ball pen or if this amber is placed with another amber no, that are both rubbed, they kind of react to each other. No? So they either push each other away or they either no, attract each other. No? In, in the case no, where, where you have rubbed them after. No? So if you put them side by side after rubbing, maybe you, know, you will see some uh, exertions of attractive no, or maybe repulsive forces. No? He observed no, uh, good insulating materials. No? So insulating materials like plastic, rubber, no? and glass no? uh, behave no? like, the, like the amber. No? So uh, the word is insulating material. So what, what, what he finds no, is that insulating materials are more effective in attracting no, the bits of paper. No? So what if, if I have a, a metal? No? So this is a, this is a uh, screwdriver. No? So what, what I have here in the screwdriver is a metal. Now the ball pen here is an insulating material. It's a plastic. No? So if I'm going to rub them both, no? <clears throat> so if I'm going to rub the plastic and I'm going to rub this metal no, in my in my shirt or in a piece of cloth which of them will attract no, uh, the bits of paper no? so according to according to 
the observation no? uh, made by no? uh, our uh, scientists. No? So we they discovered that uh, the the best materials are no? those that are insulating materials. No? So they they attract. No? So here's a picture of an electric charge, guys. No? So here's a cloth. And here's an uncharged plastic rod, no? So plastic material rubbed to a cloth, no? So at the very start, no, when you did not rub them yet, no? Amo pa ila initial state, no? But after you rub them, no? One of them, no, gets charges, no? So according to this picture, no? One material gets negative charges. And the other material, no, becomes positively charged, no? So therefore, if you will try to put them together, they will now stick to each other no? because they have now opposite charges. No? So what causes this not to behave like this? No? So uncharged materials and eventually no, after rubbing, they become like this. No? So what causes that phenomenon? No? So what makes them appear in this way? No? So that's, a, that's one thing that we should think about. No? How did the charges now... No? goes to this cloth and how did this positive charges no also now became part of this plastic no? so when initially they don't have those charges no but something in the rubbing process no created them like this no so electric charge is a property that causes matter to experience no, a force when placed in an electromagnetic field no so we know that there are two types of electric charges, those that are positive charges and negative charges. No? When things are rubbed, no, a physical entity transfers from one object to another. No? So, no? so when you rub two different things together, there is, a, there is something, no? there is an entity no? or a kind of a particle, and a thing no? that moves from one material to the other no? so just like what we have here earlier no? so initially they are not charged but after a while no? uh, an entity transfers from one material to the other no? so after you rub them no? because of the transfer of that entity then they either become positively charged or negatively charged no? do you follow me huh? so uh, rubbing is an important thing no? In the charging process. Now, sometimes they call the process, guys, as charging by contact. No? Some texts call it as charging by contact, or they also call it as frictional. No? They call it also frictional electricity. No? Because something in the friction or in rubbing na, that creates the final state of the material that they either become na, positive or negatively charged. Na. So uh, what do you need to create that? Maybe, again, na, you need an insulating material and a cloth na, like wool or silk na, or maybe fur. Na. So ang fur, guys, F-U-R. So our cloth can either be na could have wool could have fur na ang fur balahibo sang sapat bala na or silk and maybe na what you need is a plastic rod na or a plastic material na to so when you rub them together then something like this happens na so electron guys na is described as a subatomic particle which can easily you now be removed you know, from an atom you know, of one object and transfers to the atoms of another object. You know. So here you now we mention again the idea of the electron. So the electrons is the electron is the one who moves. You no, know. electron ko naga move. You know. So maybe from one material, the electron is the one that transfers no siya ko no ang subatomic particle that is easily no transferred from one material to the other the question is why is it that protons no do not move no? if electrons are the ones that easily transfers 
what about the proton? No? So the proton is also a, a charge. No? It's a kind of a charge. No? But the question is, do protons also transfer? No? Can a proton, no? which is a positive charge, no? can it also transfer? No? So that's a, that's a, a question. No? So we, again, no? we mentioned about the electron and the electron canal is the one no? that transfers from one material to another. No? Um, do you have a question, guys? Okay, so an electron is an important thing no, in the charging of our, our plastic. No? So the cloth can also be charged or the plastic rod can also be charged no? because of the movement of the electron. So our question, our, our, uh, our standing question is that, is the proton also no, able to transfer from one material to another? No? What do you think? Can a proton transfer? So here's a picture of our carbon atom. No? So we have the nucleus. No? The nucleus is the one that is in the middle. It has the protons and it has this uh, red or pink uh, atomic particles, subatomic particles. Also, we call them neutrons. No? And around our atom, no, on the outside, no, are the electrons. No? So we believe the electrons are the ones that are moving out. No? And there's an electron here that can easily transfer. We call it valence electron. No? So this valence electron is responsible no? in the electrification of the material. No? So why is the proton no, no, not able to go out no or to transfer because it is held intact now in our nucleus no? so the nucleus can holds the uh, the proton so the proton is not immediately no cannot immediately no run away no so uh, if you want to remove a proton guys no then you really have to bombard the nucleus with some other rays no para nga magwa na dang electron but on its own no it does not readily run away no so it's only possible that the electrons no electrons that are moving out no moving around that are easily dislodged or <clears throat> they they run away no so from the structure of an atom no? 